Hi everyone. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about um, my experience drawing with fountain pen. So when I was little, I actually used to write with these a lot growing up in China. It's kind of like the mandatory calligraphy classes that you have to take as a child. Um, and I never thought that I would one day start using them to draw portrait sketches. So the reason I really got into these is because I randomly um, watched a video um, and this guy, he's I believe a graphic artist um, or concept artist. I thought it was his drawings that was really cool. So I wanted to pick one up and try it out. This is one of the brands that he recommended called the Pilot Kakuno. It, I got the medium nib, which just means um, it's a little bit thicker than normal, normal pilot pens. I'll talk a little bit about why I like using fountain pen. I think there's just something about the fact that you can change up the ink in it that's really appealing to me. The fact that it's one single pen, but there's kind of like infinite possibilities. When you slide the pen across a piece of paper, it also has this really amazing sensation because you don't really know where, almost like where the line is going to lead. I know it sounds a little bit crazy when I talk about it, but because it's so sensitive to the pressure that you use, that you apply on the piece of paper, and I don't have perfect control of how much pressure I use to apply, it has this characteristic to create lines that are uniform and within your control, yet it's a little bit out of your control. It creates these beautiful expressions, these beautiful lines that almost has a mind of its own. And that's what I like about it. It's that little bit of a surprise, a little bit of a character building in the lines that makes the final drawing a little bit more unique almost like the drawing is alive and i also really enjoy the sound that it makes when i glide the pen across the piece of paper it has this really amazing sound quality to it almost like asmr and i just really enjoy drawing with it because of that comparing it to some of the other pens that I also enjoy, such as brush pen. Brush pen just does not have that grip on the piece of paper. And although it's really easy to create shadings with a brush pen, it doesn't quite have that same sensation compared to a fountain pen. And also if I were to compare fountain pen with regular gel pen and whatnot, regular gel pen is quite predictable and the ink that the regular gel pen creates also isn't quite as uniform compared to a fountain pen. When you make some cross hatchings or cross contour hatching that I often use uh, in my portrait drawings, when you combine the lines together to create a patch of color, fountain pen ink is able to create a much more uniform look compared to regular gel pens and the regular gel pens almost will create this texture on your piece of paper, which, I, which I'm not a big fan of. I much prefer the look that the fountain pen ink is able to create. So the reason that the fountain pen is able to create that uniform look with its ink is because the ink that the fountain pen uses is a lot thinner. It's more wet when you apply it on a piece of paper. And I mean, there's benefits and there are inconveniences that this quality creates, right? One of the most obvious inconveniences that this creates is that you have to find paper that works well with a fountain pen compared to other pens. You know, gel pens or brush pens, I would say, you know, as long as the paper is a little bit thick, it's okay. Like if it, the only thing I really need to care about is whether it bleeds through to the other side of the sketchbook or not but when it comes to fountain pen you have to find a piece of paper or a sketchbook that has paper that's able to absorb the ink 
in a rather speedy way because I'm I'm quite impatient. <laughs> I can't just wait for the ink to seep through and wait for it to finish drying on a piece of paper. I'm super impatient when it comes to drawing. As you all know, I like to draw every single day and I like to draw it, you know, I like to get the results rather quickly. So to be honest, when I paint with something like a watercolor, I become extremely antsy because I find that I always have to wait until the paper dries until I apply the next layer in order to achieve the desired effect. So with fountain pen, it's incredibly important that you find a sketchbook with a paper that it works well in. You know, even in the sketchbook that I'm using right now, I'll show you a few clips where uh, you can see after the ink fully gets absorbed and dries out, some of it has this feathery effect which I'm not a big fan of. I don't think I quite like that look. And also, if I end up smudging it when it's still a little bit wet, it is incredibly ugly. <laughs> so because of that, I would say one of the tips I have for using fountain pen is to pick a sketchbook or paper that you use that's thick enough and absorbent enough that it would work well with fountain pen. And that's really important. It's finding that right paper balance. But I would say the benefit of having the ink being really wet, and I mentioned this earlier, is that when you are creating cross hatchings with it, when you're creating shadows with it, you're able to create a rather uniform patch of ink in comparison to some of the other uh, pens out there. Because the ink is very, very wet, it just makes your hatchings to have this uniform and static look without overworking it and creating patchy or texture on top of it because the ink is able to layer really well but i think also because of the ink that it uses it has a it's another effect which is that if you don't use it frequently the ink does dry out and it takes a little bit of time to revive that pen. What I had to do is actually dip it in a little bit of water to get it wet up again and, um, and dry it that way. But even that, you know, it's just inconvenient. In terms of actually drawing with a fountain pen, uh, to me, I would say it's no different comparing with drawing with other pens. Uh, it does have this uh, fluid feeling that you can you know, with the pressure that you use, you're able to create kind of like the denser or thicker lines versus thinner and finer lines. It's definitely really interesting. But in terms of actually drawing with it, I would say the tip there is still very similar to brush pen. I like to go from outward in. I like to find the boundaries of the subject matter that I'm observing and find where the contours of the object is and draw that first and then find out kind of where the face is turning, where the direction of the person is and focus on that and finish with details, which I've also mentioned in my other video for drawing with a brush pen. It's really important to have a focus area. And most of the times when it comes to portrait drawings, they're the eyes or the hair or somewhere on the face, you know, that's because that's really where you're capturing your audience. It's kind of making sure that that facial expression or the feel of the drawing it has been captured. They lie within the details and the details come last. You want to capture the details from shading, from the light and dark values on your face or clothing or the pose the figure drawing that you have where the shadow is cast it etc etc so that's the last step that you should focus on the first step is definitely to try to capture the contour and boundaries of your drawings especially when it comes to freehand pen drawing without any pencil sketches i would say this tip isn't exclusive to drawing with fountain pen it's every single drawing, every single painting, every single piece of artwork that you ever try to make, which is establish what the focus of this piece of work is, right? What is that focus? 
even before you put your pen down onto a piece of paper, you need to know, you know, when you are creating this piece of work, what should the focus be? What do you want, you know, someone looking at this piece of work? What is that one thing you want to capture their attention? Is it the color? Is it the contrast between two shadings? Is it the flow? Is it the facial expression? Is it the gaze? Is it the lines that you have created? What is it? What is that one thing that you want people to notice immediately when they look at it? And that's what I like to capture with fountain pen a lot of the times, right? Because I think fountain pen has this unique quality, and the moment, almost the moment I look at a piece of drawing, I can identify whether it's drawn with fountain pen or not, just because the lines are so obvious when、um, you're comparing a fountain pen drawing versus some other drawing. And the thing that I always like to capture, I would say, it's that free form, the idea of freedom, the idea that you know the lines has a mind of its own, is something that I like to capture in my drawings using fountain pen specifically. And as a result of that, you can see a lot of the fountain pen drawings that I produce. They're a little bit sketchier. They're a little bit more rough, and. I don't really. It, it's not very neat. It's not super polished, and I don't spend a lot of time、uh, making sure that it's really organized. It almost feels a little bit messier compared to、uh, my paintings or some of the other form of drawings I like to use. And I think that's part of my style as well. One of the things that I have struggled with all my life is finding this internal balance. Because there is a part of me that、um, <laughs> I always try to aim for perfection. I want it to be detailed. I want to capture enough details, and I I want it to look really pretty and aesthetic. But there's also another part of me that wants to be free. I love autonomy. I don't like boundaries. I never like to draw with a ruler or a guide. I know a lot of people, you know, they. They might use a guide to make a circle as an example to make sure it's really uniform. But so what if the circle isn't round? I like to draw it just a few times more. Eventually, that circle will look round. You know. So what if the lines aren't straight? That wonkiness, I think, actually adds character. And also, a lot of times, I find that if hatchings aren't uniform, if you have enough hatchings that aren't uniform, there's harmony. In looking at a piece of drawing, when nothing is uni- equally uniform, so it's almost like when everything is equally not uniform, you have created uniformity or harmony for your hatchings. You know, the the other thing is, I I do I don't like to use guides or rulers and things like that when it comes to drawing or painting, but I. I do enjoy using references. I do like planning things out. I do like knowing what I want to draw before I start drawing, and I think that's the other part of me that I I really wants to be in control. I want to be in control of the direction of things, of the the feelings that I create, but I don't like predictability when it comes to actually executing. I want there to be a level of Freedom or looseness when it comes to drawings and paintings, and I think that's my style. I think what style is is a mixture of your habit, your preferences, the materials that you like to use, the subject matter you like to observe and make into visual representations. And your style changes, right? And your style changes because your habit changes, your preferences changes, the things you like to study also changes over time, and that's okay. And I think a lot of people don't understand that because I see a lot of people go online and they search for how to create my own art style or how do I develop my own art style, and I find that to be really funny because. <laughs> No one can actually tell you what your art style is. You have to figure out yourself. It's like your handwriting. You developed your handwriting through writing. 
you developed your habits through routines, through doing something a lot, then you created that habit, right? And your art style is exactly the same. How do you develop it? Well, you have to do it a lot. You have to build a routine around it. You have to find time to stick to that routine and keep on doing it, right? I, I've got a few videos already explaining how to find time, right? How do you find time to keep on drawing? I think I have another video about how to be, build, build up your routine of drawing and you know, how to keep on drawing and things like that. But I think that's really important to know. It's that you can't just all of a sudden develop your own art style. It's that you had to first build up time, routine, habit, and then those things combined become your art style. So there's a prerequisite in developing your art style. And it isn't just something that, you know, you keep on thinking about the art style, it's going to come to you. It's that you continuously practice, you continuously study the things that you want to draw, the things you want to paint, and then you ended up developing this style. I'm not saying that, you know, I like my art style. <laughs> That's the other thing. A lot of people think that, oh, I, I really like something and then that that is something that I work towards and that's going to become my art style. I think it's actually not, they're not, there's no causation. There are things that I really enjoy looking at. There are things that I love, artists that I love, artwork that I love to study. I love to look at them. They're not mine. They are things that I enjoy looking at. There are things that I enjoy studying. Can I create it? Can I copy it? Well, maybe right like i think with enough patience i can copy them but that's not me i don't enjoy drawing that way i don't enjoy painting that way i think ultimately style is something that's just inner it's within and through practice through doing it over and over and over again and it's it became part of you right that's something that it's defined by who you are it's a slight subtle difference of what I think a lot of people understood our style to be because a lot of people think that oh if I if I look at someone else's art style and I really like it and I practice what they do eventually I could do it I mean I could certainly see that 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 could be a route that you can take if you're super dedicated in uh, developing a particular art style and you keep on copying someone else's art style eventually that be became your own routine that became your own habit that became your art style i can see that but i think a more obvious way is just to find your own style through working on the work that you enjoy creating right which is your preferences what do you like to draw what material do you like to use and continue building up that way because ultimately i'm a strong believer in art should be something that you enjoy doing it should not be something that you're doing because you're doing it for monetary reasons you're doing it for fame you're doing it for your audience it shouldn't be like that it should be something that you just like i mean through centuries through human evolution we have always enjoyed art we have always gravitated towards art making art even nowadays i mean there's the generative AI <laughs> that's dominating our society right now, especially in on the online art community. But I don't think they're going to overtake the simplicity of just drawing in your sketchbook. There's something really lovely about spending a little bit of time alone on your desk drawing in your sketchbook. And I don't think anything is going to take over that. There will always be people just enjoy drawing, enjoy the practice of studying something, observing something, and losing time over it, losing sight of all of your surrounding, all of your problems, all the things that boggle down your mind. They all vanish in that moment when you're creating art. And that's what I enjoy. And I will continue to be doing this because I enjoy doing it. Well, thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. 
and leave a comment if something that I've mentioned in here resonated with you, or that you have found the courage or found the time to actually sit down and pick something up and start drawing.